Hey guys, I'm back. If you're new, welcome to my channel. I was on vacation and I missed you guys and I'm so glad that you're here with me today. I'm very happy to announce that I'm going to be part of a summer coastal, I don't know why I do that with my hands, but a summer coastal DIY challenge hosted by Heidi Sambal. I'll be leaving a link to her channel along with a playlist that you should really check out in the description box below. And you new guys, if you do like what you see, I hope you hit the subscribe, little heart, the subscribe. Let me see if I can talk, a little heart on the lower right hand corner of the screen. Also hit the notification bell so this way YouTube will inform you when I'm back. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram at Natalie Creates Crafts. So guys, I hope you're in a crafting mood. I hope you enjoy the tutorial and let's get started. Our first project is the Farmhouse Coastal Mirror. You're going to need one mirror, clothespins. I got these at Walmart because they were more bang for your buck. I paid $1.78 for a hundred of them. Krylon Fusion paint in the color Blue Ocean Breeze. Waverly chalk paint in the color Plaster. Paint brushes. A bag of seashells. Small pearls. Glue gun and glue sticks. We're going to start by dismantling our mirror. It has a couple of little brackets in the back, but it pries off pretty easily. Now we're going to take our clothespins. We're going to dismantle the clothespins. They, uh, they do come off fairly easy, and I do save those little metal brackets because you know you never know if you might need them for another project. <laughs> so we're gonna dismantle all of our clothespins. For this project, I used 38 of them. Once we're done dismantling them, we're then going to take my favorite adhesive, all-purpose adhesive, DAP, and we're going to apply about four, three to four drops on the back of one of the pins, and then we're going to adhere another back, just as shown. And you're just gonna need to hold it just for a few seconds, and that's about it. Like I said, this glue bonds pretty much instantly. So you're going to do this for all 38 of the clothespins. Once you're done with those, we're now going to take the mirror frame and we're going to hot glue the clothespins to the side of the frame. And yeah, I finally got my silicone mat, which I absolutely love because, uh, you know, none of the glue now sticks to the work surface or that silicone mat and it just sticks to the project <laughs> so I then you know glued them around the perimeter and um, I will say that it was a, a better deal to get the clothespins at um, Walmart because uh, Dollar Tree sells them but they only sell them 38 in a pack and I got a hundred of these for less than two dollars. I Like I said, I think I paid $1.78 for them. So you're going to glue it all around the edge. And once that is completely dry, we're now going to paint it. Now, if you don't have spray paint, you can use the Waverly chalk paint with the Agava, but I decided to use the Krylon in that ocean color and gave it about two coats. Once that was completely dry, I then took my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster and my stipple brush. And yes, I dry brushed. I really do like dry brushing a lot, <laughs> but it does take down the shine and I just love the dry, dry brush, dry brush <laughs> technique. So we're gonna go in from the edges and work our way inward. And don't forget to dry brush the center. And then just touch it up to your liking. Once that's dry, I'm going to then take the shells. Now I used shells and pearls. I used 21 and believe it or not, they did all come in one bag. I only needed one bag. So I did a dry fit first to make sure that they were placed correctly. Once I was happy with the way they looked, I then took my hot glue and I glued them pearl, shell, pearl, shell. I did glue the shells a little bit at an angle. 
And I also want to clarify that I used 21 shells and 21 pearls, but there were 21 shells in that one bag at the Dollar Tree. Now it's time to assemble the mirror. So I just snapped the mirror right back in, in the back. And it's all finished. I really loved how it turned out. And with the cost of materials, this mirror was less than $3. That's always the best part. And I think it's really pretty. Our next project is a sea, sand, and waves sign. I used three five gallon paint sticks that I had already trimmed down, but I wanted to use for another project. Waverly chalk paint in the colors white and agave. Paint brushes. Cricut accessories, white vinyl, and Dollar Tree clear contact paper. Jute cord. Seashells. Glue gun, glue sticks, and scissors. We're going to start with three of our paint sticks. Like I said, I had used part of these sticks for another project, but of course I recycle everything. So I measured one piece at six inches, the other piece at five inches, and the last piece at four inches. I then aligned all three of the pieces where I had made my mark. And then I just took my ruler and I drew a straight line. I did end up cutting these with my chop saw, but you can easily use a miter box and a hand saw. They cut off fairly easy. Once I had my pieces cut, I then took my Waverly chalk paint in the color agave and the white. We're going to take our six inch piece and we're going to apply one generous coat of the agave, making sure you cover the front and the sides. Once we're done with that piece, I then added some of the Waverly chalk paint in the color white and I lightened it up. And I'm going to use that and I'm going to cover the five inch piece, again covering the front and the sides. Then I add a little bit more white and I apply that to the four inch piece just to give uh, the pieces an ombre look. This craft was actually an inspiration piece that I got off of Pinterest. As we allow for those pieces to dry, I then went to Cricut Design Space where I made my words and then I sent that design to my machine to cut it out on the white vinyl where I then weeded it and then I applied the Dollar Tree clear contact paper. It really makes great transfer tape. Once I had all the words lifted, it's time to put it on our little boards. So the top one is going to have C, so I just placed it and then I burnished it and then lifted it. Then the second piece is going to say sand and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to center it, press it down, burnish it and lift it. And then the last one says waves. Now that our vinyl is applied, we're then going to take the Waverly chalk paint in the color white and our stipple brush, and we're going to dry brush the pieces. Again, you can use more or less depending on your taste. But I always start off light and then just add where I feel is needed. Applying more paint on the edges. Now I'm going to take some seashells. Um, I actually collected from the beach, and I'm going to apply the smaller shells on each individual wooden piece, just applying a shell on opposite ends. Just be careful when using the hot glue with these shells because they do get pretty hot and you don't want to burn your fingers. Now I'm going to take my largest shell and I'm going to place it in the center about two inches from the bottom piece and I'm going to take my jute cord and I'm going to make a knot, cut off the excess and then I'm going to glue that knot right on the top center of that shell. 
Then I'm going to make a loop, again about two inches in length. Then I'm going to cut the excess. Actually it's four inches in length, but once you loop it around it's two inches. <laughs> then we're going to glue the end to the back inner part of the shell. Now I'm going to take my jute and I'm going to measure it, giving myself about four to five inches from the top and the bottom. Then I'm going to make a knot and I'm going to loop it through that shell and I'm going to glue the knot about an inch in from the six inch piece that says wave. Then I'm going to measure it to try to make it even, cut off the jute that I need and then make another knot and then glue that to the opposite side. I then flipped the pieces to the back where I'm going to then glue the jute. For the longer piece, I glued it in about an inch, and then I made a knot, then I made a knot, <laughs> glued that to the top part, gave myself about an inch distance, made another knot, and then applied the glue about, I wanna say a little less, maybe three quarters of an inch in for the five inch piece. And then made a knot on top of that. And then measured another inch, made another knot. And then glued about a half inch into the four inch piece. Good thing you could see what I'm doing because <laughs> I can't believe I'm even trying to explain. <laughs> There's a lot of knotting, measuring, and gluing. But we're gonna repeat the process on the opposite side to make sure that the pieces lay even. So you're gonna measure it, make the knot, adjust it if you need to, make sure that either side is even. And then glue it in about the same three quarters of an inch on that side as you did the other. Make a knot, measure an inch, make another knot, and then glue the final piece to the lower six inch piece and then just cut off the excess. Once that's done, I then took another piece of jute, I don't know, I, I guess about maybe six or eight inches, and then I wrapped it around the bottom piece about three times, I wrapped it around three times and then I made a knot and then just cut off the excess. And our little sign is all done. And this sign, honestly, uh, I used scraps. It was pretty much free. If I paid 25 cents, 50 cents, but it just came out beautiful and again, I love it. On to the next project, which is a sea turtle plate decor. You're going to need one plate. This was actually a leftover plate from another project. A turtle scarf. Four strands from a mop head. Waverly chalk paint in the colors white and agave. Mod Podge. Paint brushes. Seashells. Glue gun, glue sticks and scissors. We're going to start with our plate. Now, like I said, this was a leftover plate I had from another project. You could get a white plate, but I didn't have that, so I used the Waverly chalk paint in the color white, and I applied two good coats, letting each coat dry. But like I said, if you have a white plate, you can totally skip this step, but I wanted to use what I had which means I had to paint, but I don't mind because it's therapeutic. Remember, two coats. Once your plate has completely dried, we're now gonna take our turtle scarf, I thought this was so pretty, and we're going to align it so that one of our turtles is right in the center of our plate, and we're just gonna trim off what we need. Now we're gonna take our Mod Podge, and our brush, we're going to remove the scarf piece and we're going to apply a 
generous coat. Not, not too much. You don't want it to be too lumpy, but just to make sure it's applied throughout the entire face of the plate. Then we're going to apply our turtle and we're going to smooth it out. Now I've seen people use um, saran wrap, but I didn't have any on hand, so I just had to use my fingers. Then I went back over it with some more Mod Podge, making sure I put it in the creases of the plate. Once that's completely dry, then I then took my scissors and I just cut off the excess fabric, making sure to get up as close to the edge as possible. When I was all done cutting off the excess, I then took a Dollar Tree sandpaper block just to smooth out the rough edges on the back of the plate. We're now going to take our mop head and just pull four pieces out. They do come out easy. You don't have to take the whole thing apart. For this project, we only need four strands. Now we're going to take our plate and we're going to take two strands of the mop head. We're going to hold it to the edge and we're going to glue the two pieces right to the top, the top edge of the plate. Then I took the two pieces and I just swirled them around and we're going to take those swirled pieces and we're going to glue them right to the edge of our plate. Just make sure that you hold it so that it's nice and curved to the curve of our plate. When you get to the end, you're just going to cut off whatever is uneven and then we're going to take the next two pieces and we're going to glue them directly underneath where the first two pieces end. So you're going to glue the first two pieces down over the next two pieces and then we're going to put a little bit of glue and we're going to overlap so this way it looks like it's all one piece around the plate. You're then going to swirl or twirl the other two pieces and you will then finish gluing them to the edge of the plate until you reach the other side. Just keep twirling it as needed. When you get to the end, you're just going to then cut off the excess. We're now going to take five of our shells. I used one large, two medium, and two small. And we're gonna take the Waverly chalk paint in the color white, and we're going to apply one coat to all of the shells. Once that paint is dry, we're then going to take the Waverly chalk paint in the color agave, and we're going to dry brush. Now, I dry brushed the larger shell making sure get, to get all the edges in the center. And then with the two medium ones, I then applied a little bit more of that agave just to give it a different uh, painted look, if you will. So this one was coated a little bit more with the agave. So I did that to the two medium shells. Again, I just painted those two medium ones just to give it a different look. And then the last smaller shells, I just gave a dry brush technique like I did the center larger shell. Now we're gonna take our pretty turtle plate and we're going to glue our painted shells on the top center of the plate. Starting with the larger one, then overlapping the two medium ones and then overlapping the two smaller ones. Just be careful when gluing the shells down because they can crack. I then took the raffia from the bag of shells and I made a little bow and I just glued it right to the center and our plate is all done. 
I love how it turned out, wrinkles and all. I know I didn't have my cellophane paper, but I still love the way it turned out. And this plate maybe cost about $2, 250 Okay, <laughs> but still a good deal. Our next project is the Farmhouse Beach Candle. You're going to need one base, jute cord, seashells, Waverly chalk paint in the colors white and agave, paint brushes, glue gun, glue sticks, and scissors. We're going to start by taking our base and we're going to take the jute cord and we're going to start gluing it about two thirds down from the top of the vase. I started by gluing it a little drop in each corner, if you will, so a drop in the front, a drop in the back, and on either side. And I just followed it through. Um, I thought this vase was kind of cool. I never saw it before. Um, I happened to see it at the dollar store, and I thought, hmm, this would make a cool candle. <laughs> so as we're approaching the bottom of our little vase, I'm adding a little bit more glue. So this way our jute stays together. And when you get to the end, which we are approaching, <laughs> you're just going to then cut off the excess. Now we're going to take a lighter and just burn off all the fuzzy edges, but just be careful when using a flame. Once that's all done, we're then going to address the seashells. I'm going to take the Waverly chalk paint in the color white and I'm going to apply one good coat to all three of the shells. Once that's all dry, we're then going to take the Waverly chalk paint in the color agave. And yes, of course, you've guessed it, we are going to dry brush our shells. Yeah, I really do like dry brush. I'm sorry, that's just like one of my favorite paint techniques. I just love the look. So I usually go around the edges and then follow through in the center till I like the look. Once that's all dry, I then took my little vase and I am going to glue the larger shell right in the center. and then take the two medium shells and glue them to either side of the larger shell. Once that's dry, I'm going to prop up the vase and I'm going to add some play sand that I had about halfway up. Then I'm gonna make a little hole for the candle, fix the sand around it, and it's all finished. A quick and easy project, very pretty, and of course the best part, costs less than $2 to make. Our final project is the sea turtle wall decor. I'm going to use one recycled 4th of July steak sign I got from the Dollar Tree this year, sea glass, seashells, Krylon fusion paint in the color blue ocean breeze, Waverly chalk paint in the colors white and elephant, paint brushes, Cricut accessories, white flat vinyl, and Dollar Tree clear contact paper used for transfer tape, all purpose adhesive, glue gun, and glue sticks. We're going to start with our sign. I'm going to repurpose it because it really did get faded from the sun. I did remove the stake from the back. Now we're going to peel off the burlap. It came off fairly easy, you know, it was out for a month. So the burlap was able to come off pretty much in one piece. Once that was done, I just used a Dollar Tree sanding block and I just gently, just in circular motions, as you can see, removed whatever glitter was remaining from the back also to make the surface smooth. Once that was all done, I then took my Kryon Fusion Paint, I really love this stuff, and I took it outside and I gave it one coat, that's all it needed. 
Once that's all done, we're then going to take our Waverly chalk paint and the Colored Elephant and the stipple brush and take a guess. Yes, we're going to de-stress. So we're going to dry brush it. Um, I dry brushed the centers and the edges. Sorry about the glare, um, but yeah, we went around the edges. Then we're going to take the white chalk paint and we're going to do exactly the same. I just went over it with both colors till I was happy with the way it turned out. Then I went to Cricut Design Space where I designed my words. Then I sent it to my machine and then I weeded it. Then weeded off the excess pieces. Applied the clear contact paper, burnished it, and then lifted it. Now we're going to take the sign and we're going to place our letters right in the top center of the board. I then burnished it and then lifted it or peeled it. <laughs> now we're going to take the Waverly chalk paint in the color white and a thin brush and I'm going to carefully paint around the edges of our plaque. I'm not a good painter but I just did the best I could and I used a very thin brush and took my time. Now we're going to take our seashells and we're going to then do what I like to call a dry fit. I took the sea glass and I used the sea glass for the heads and the feet and arms, if you will, of our little sea turtles. Once I was happy with the placement, I then took some hot glue and I hot glued the shells onto the plaque. Just be careful because those seashells do get pretty hot because they're thin. I'm now going to use my favorite all-purpose adhesive to adhere sea glass to the board. It's um, made by DAP. I get a lot of questions about that all-purpose adhesive and it's really good stuff. Uh, to the point I think I ran out in the middle right there and I had to go grab another bottle. But we're going to use that to glue the head and the little arms and feet of our sea turtles. Now I know you can't really see them because of the lighting, but it really looks great. I'm going to show it to you at the end. I then attached a piece of jute in the back for the hanger. And it's all done. As you can see, you can see the little turtles. And I think it came out so pretty and this project Really, I can't even put a price on it. I think maybe $2. Either way, a good deal. Now that I think about it, even less because I did recycle that 4th of July sign. Thanks again for watching. Remember, you can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram at Natalie Creates Crafts. Please don't forget to subscribe so that this way we'll be seeing each other next time. Until then, happy crafting, God bless, and take care.